Uh, here at Family Maker Camp, uh, we are bringing you projects that you can do at home with your family, hands-on projects, hands-on making, with materials that you can either find at home or that you can access from your home here in our shelter-in-place environment. I want to thank you all for joining us at Family Maker Camp. And today we're very lucky to have Kathy Ciceri. Kathy is an award-winning author, instructional designer, and maker. She focuses on science, technology, history, and art. She's written articles and plenty of how-to books for Make, Wired, and Adafruit. Today, Kathy's going to be presenting a project from her Fabric and Fiber Inventions book. And so I'd like to introduce Kathy. Thank you for joining us. And take Thank it away, you. Kathy. Yeah. Thanks for having me. So um, this is the book, Fabric and Fiber Inventions. And um, all my books um, use things I find around the house. I really like making stuff out of recycled materials and you know anything I can find. So today I'm going to be making a tote bag. Here is a sample I made from an old Maker Camp shirt. I thought this was particularly appropriate. And um, this can be used as a shopping bag now that people have to bring their own shopping bags to the store. Um, and it doesn't require any sewing, so it's going to be really quick to make. Um, let's see. So here is a regular t-shirt. I'm going to be using a baby size t-shirt just to demonstrate because it'll fit better on my work stand, but it makes a very tiny bag. So you probably want to use at least a kid size t-shirt. If you use a big one like this, you don't want to put a lot of heavy stuff in it because it does stretch and you probably won't be able to probably be dragging on the ground by that point. So think about what size you want to use. Um, T-shirts are nice because they are soft, they are stretchy, they have cool messages on them and graphics. Um, and they also are good for cutting up because they don't um, ravel like some other fabric does. And I will be talking later about um, what t-shirts are made out of and why they work that way. But um, so one special thing that your t-shirt's going to do is it's going to make this nice fringe because it curls up. So we'll talk about that later also. And so what you're going to need is your t-shirt, some scissors, and that's really all you need. You might want to add some beads for decoration. I just have regular plastic pony beads, but anything that has a large hole. Um, if you're going to be using beads, you might want something to push the fabric through the beads. And I have a bamboo skewer here. Um, I've used a screwdriver. I tried the cap of a pen. It wasn't quite big enough for the beads I was using, but anything that you find that you're not going to stab yourself with is good. Oh, and also another optional thing you might want to have is some um, masking tape. So the steps that you're going to follow are really simple. Let me switch to, well, I'll do this one more from this camera and then I'll switch to my close-up camera. So you've got a t-shirt, you're going to be making the handle by cutting off the sleeves and the collar. You're going to be cutting fringe along the bottom and then you're going to be tying the fringe together and that's how you close the bottom up without sewing. So three simple steps. All right, let me switch to my other camera. Let's see, okay. So first thing we're gonna do, here we go. Move that over a little bit, is cut off the collar and the sleeves and you can get very neat and pin everything and make sure it's even, or you can just cut it. It works fine if you just cut it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just taking my regular scissors here and just cutting one sleeve off, just following the shape of the seam there. You don't need this piece, so we can just discard that and cut off the other sleeve. Okay, and then the last thing is to cut off 
along the collar. So you can just follow the shape of the collar here. If you want longer straps on your tote bag, you can make a bigger cut. But what I suggest is that you start off by cutting around the collar and then see how you like it because you can always make the hole bigger, but you can't make it smaller. I'm gonna turn this around the other way and I'm just gonna cut right around that edge. Okay. And that's it for the straps. So now we've got the straps made for our tote bag. And the next step is to cut the fringe along the bottom. Now, like I said, this is a tiny toddler size shirt. And what you really want to measure when you're figuring out how long your fringe you want, you want is to measure from where your opening is going to be to where you want the bottom of your bag. And don't worry about how much is left here. You can always cut that shorter if you want. Um, on the other hand, if you feel like you don't have quite enough room, what's going to happen when you pull on that, you're going to pull on that fringe, it's going to get longer and skinnier. And so your fringe is going to actually end up longer than the length that you cut on your shirt. And actually, let me show you how that works. Just take a quick break here. So this is a strip of a t-shirt that I cut just along the bottom of a regular t-shirt. And you can see it's about on my measuring cutting board here, it's about an inch wide. So what happens when I pull it, when I stretch it, is it curls up and it gets longer and skinnier. So I can show you, let me cut a strip here. All right, so I've got, let's say I make three inches of fringe here when I pull it. Now all of a sudden I have one, two, three, four, five inches almost of fringe and it's much skinnier. So keep that in mind when you're deciding how much fringe you want. And um, I will talk a little later about how you can tell whether your t-shirt's gonna stretch or not. Some kinds of t-shirt, probably not the kind you have if you've got a kid's shirt, um, don't curl up as nicely because they're actually made from a thicker, uh, kind of warmer t-shirt fabric. But I don't think we're gonna have to worry about that with most kids' t-shirts. So let's see. I need to, there we go. All right, so now we're going to, let's cut that off. Cut off that bottom hem there. And just gonna show you a different kind of cutter that sewers use. This is a rotary cutter. And if you happen to have one of these and you are old enough to use it safely, this is really nice because you can just go like a pizza cutter and cut that off really nicely but it's a little bit sharp. So I would save that until you are old enough to use that safely. All right, I am, let's see, I'll leave it this way. Actually, I can't cut that way. So I'm gonna turn this around here. So it's gonna be sideways to you for which I apologize. So um, I'm gonna figure out where I want the fringe on my toddler size tote bag I want it to be about three inches, I think. One, two, three. So I can just eyeball it, which just means, you know, cutting it to where you think it's gonna go. If you wanna make it a little neater, if you care about it being neater, you can take some masking tape, make it longer than the t-shirt. And I'm actually gonna tape it right down to my table here and holds the whole shirt in place while I'm cutting. Should I move the camera back a little bit so you can see the whole thing or maybe I can slide this down a little bit more. There we go, well, you can see a little bit more. So another thing you can do if you care about it being neater, which I don't necessarily do, but you could take a ruler and 
you could measure off how wide you want each strip, each cut to be for your fringe. Um, a good width is about three quarters of an inch. So a little bit less than an inch. And you could measure it along there if you care. If you don't care, then just cut it by eye. It's not gonna make a difference when you are um, using your tote bag really, but some people like to be a little neater than I really care about. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut my fringe and I'm going to start by cutting the side seam open. Okay, so I just cut the side and then I'm just gonna cut each line. I'm just gonna go across the entire shirt, just cutting through both front and back of the shirt. And this will just take me a couple minutes. So I was saying, and what makes t-shirt material stretchier? Did you have something to say? Well, okay. Kathy, I was just going what to say it? that we have H7 Apollo joining us today and Muhammad on Facebook. We also have a comment from Studio Hannah from YouTube that who also has a bunch of grocery bags made from old t-shirts and gets compliments on them all the time. Found them very handy. So if you're watching us live, please uh, let us know where you're joining from and if you have any questions for Kathy. Cool. I'd love to see pictures of your tote bags. I found that the tie-dye shirts work really well. I don't have a lot of uh, decorative t-shirts. I have a lot of t-shirts from bicycle races because my husband runs bicycle races. And so if you like, you know, pictures of bicycles are nice, but I don't have a wide variety of t-shirts and I'm sure people have much prettier t-shirts than I do. So what I was saying is I like, uh, getting into the geekiness of material that I work with, whatever that happens to be. So for t-shirts, what makes them stretchy is the fact that they are actually knitted as opposed to woven. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. I'm just about to make my last cut here. So I've cut all my fringe. So there's a particular type of knit called Jersey, and that's the kind that stretches really nicely and um, if you know how to knit, there's two stitches. This is a little project from the Fabric and Fiber Inventions book. It's a little sampler kind of that you can knit. And um, you knit on the front and the back comes out being pearl. And this is what your t-shirt material that is jersey that is good for curling will look like. It will have these uh, kind of V-shaped stitches on the front and the back is gonna be kind of a uh, line of little bumpy loops there. So if you look closely or even take a magnifying glass to your t-shirt and you see that it's the V-shaped knit on one side and the bumpy pearl stitch on the other, that's a kind that's gonna curl up. So we have our um, fringe cut into strips here and I'm actually gonna take the tape off because then I can stretch it all the way up to that edge there. If you wanted your tote bag to be wide at the bottom, you, you could even leave that tape on there and it'll keep it from clumping up. But um, so what you're going to do now, let me get this so that you can just see one thing. So I'm gonna take each piece of fringe and I'm just gonna stretch it just like I did that sample. And so this, this is another part that just takes a little bit of time just doing the same thing over and over. I'm just gonna stretch each one. And this is the same method you would use to make t-shirt yarn, which I have a ball of t-shirt yarn here. And I use this for different projects. Um, I used it for a weaving that I did where I made a cardboard loom. This is also from the book. And I started off by using regular yarn to make 
the vertical strings and then I was weaving back and forth with some t-shirt yarn. And uh, it's nice and stretchy. It's kind of like maybe parents might remember making pot holders out of stretchy loops when they were kids. It's kind of comes out like that. Um, but really anything that um, uses yarn that could be used chunky yarn, you can use a t-shirt yarn and it's really cool. And it's a great way to recycle t-shirts. So I'm just going to keep pulling all of these till they get stretchy. So Sienna, if you have any things to add at this point would be a good time. <laughs> Well, we are posting um, links to Kathy Cesari's uh, book uh, in the chat, and I will get that right now. Um, sign or Sine, I apologize for how I'm mispronouncing your name, I'm sure I am, is loving the trippy designs with the tie-dye shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I I uh, have a tie-dye, you know, project in the book. I had never done it successfully. Uh, my kids once went to camp and they were supposed to do tie-dye and it came back all brown. So I think somebody did something wrong. But uh, this came out really nice. And that is a really fun activity to do when it is warm outside, which where I live, it's uh, below freezing. So it's not quite outside tie-dye weather, but I really loved doing that project. All right, so I'm just pulling these, stretching these. So if you want to add beads at the end, which I'll show you how to do, the longer and skinnier you make these, the better that's going to work. Um, again, if you don't have the right kind of t-shirt and it's not stretching, it's not going to make a difference for making your tote bag because you'll just have fatter, shorter fringe, but it'll still work. Now, when I put the tape down, I made a nice straight line, but I've also seen people do this project where they put the tape at an angle. So you kind of get a, a nice slope to the bottom of your bag that adds more to the design. And I've also seen people make it curved. So sometimes, uh, like especially that big uh, Maker Camp t-shirt I had that's gigantic, it was like extra large. I ended up cutting it so I went curved up at the ends and that just made it less wide. I had more fringe and made a nice design. So here's all my stretched out fringe. And then the last step to close it up is you are going to take the front and back that match each pair and tie them in a square knot. And if you don't have a lot of practice doing knots, this is a good activity to do. So I will show you a square knot. All you have to remember is you have a right piece and a left piece and you just go right over left and left over right, whichever order you want, you just do one first and then the other. So I'm going to put the right over the left and I'm gonna bring it underneath and I'm gonna pull tight and then I'm gonna put the left over the right, bring it up underneath and pull it tight. And you do wanna make this knot tight. That's gonna hold your bag closed. And also the tighter you make it, the longer fringe you're gonna have left. So now you're just going to go down the whole bottom of your t-shirt again and just tie each front and back pair of fringe. So can you see clearly what I'm doing there? Okay. Yes, I think it's showing through well. Okay. All right. So I don't know if you want to watch me do this whole thing or I could just stop here and show you how to do the beads. What do you think? Should I finish this? No, I think I think if we could switch to the beads, that would be fantastic. And you do, I think I remember you do have a finished bag as well to show, right? right? Yeah. 
So you're so. not, you're actually just tying the front and the back together to close it. You're not, and that's enough to make it so that larger pieces won't fall through. Yes. You're not going to want to fill this bag with rice or something that's <laughs> going to fall through the gaps, but um, just tying these, you end up, you know, with little finger size holes there, but you could, you know, you could, you could put uh, you could use this for a yarn bag. If you're into knitting, you could put fruit in here. That's probably not going to fall through. Um, so you can use it as a shopping bag that way. So, all right. So I'm going to show you how to make a pattern with the beads, which is a cool thing to do as well. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five knots here. And I'm only going to put a few beads on and I'm going to make some kind of a pattern. So I'm going to go one, two, I'm going to take the third knot and I'm going to take the knot next to it. And I'm going to take one piece of fringe from each of them. So two knots that are next to each other. See if you can see that. Two knots that are next to each other. I take one piece of fringe from one and one from the other. I'm going to tie a knot first and if you leave a little gap there it kind of makes a nice kind of lattice work design there a little open design and then i'm going to take one of my pony beads let's take a red one so there's my little pony bead and i'm putting the two ends together and i'm going to stick them through that hole together at the same time. And I'm going to take my bamboo skewer and I'm going to poke the uh, two fabric ends through the bead. And hopefully they will go smoothly. But this might take a little finagling. I'm just pushing them through there. Let's see. There we go. Let's see if they're both going to come. There we go. All right. So now I've got I've got a little bit of a space there, and I've got my bead. And then one of the nice things about using t-shirts as a shopping bag is that it's really washable. But um, you don't want these beads coming off in the wash. So even though it's kind of on there tight at the moment, uh, I think everybody's parents would appreciate if we just tied another knot there. So you don't end up with a dryer full of plastic beads. So do another one more square knot right over left, left over right. And then I would give these a tug down so that it hangs down with the rest of your fringe and then you can go you know another three knots down and add another one and make a design and it'll end up looking a little bit like this this one came out a little too short this is kind of project that you know if you don't get it perfect every time people are not going to notice when you're using it they're going to look at your beautiful design and your nice handles. I think I'm going to switch my camera back. So they're just going to look at your cute little bag and it's really forgiving. So it's a good project to uh, get started on. And the more you do it, the uh, fancier it'll look. And um, one last thing, if you don't have a nice fancy t-shirt, I made one out of just a plain undershirt kind of t-shirt. It was, you know, a pre tie dye t-shirt that I was practicing on. But you could take this and you could use any kind of t-shirt decoration technique that you like. So you could use uh, fabric markers, you could use puffy pens. Um, I know there was a earlier um, Maker Camp video with Sandy Roberts where she was making camp t-shirts with markers and making it run so it looked like tie dye. So um, you can do any, any t-shirt decoration technique with your bag. And the nice thing is that because you've already cut it, you know where you want that design to go. So you don't have to uh, 
just use the design that's already printed like on my Maker Camp t-shirt. So that is pretty much it. And I think it comes out really nice. If you have any questions, I can uh, keep tying while you're talking. No, I think I think this is fabulous. I can't wait to make my t-shirt tote bag. And um, I think we will go ahead and wrap it up. I'm trying to spotlight my video here. Uh, so we just want to thank you for joining us here at Family Maker Camp. And uh, Family Maker Camp is brought to you by the members of Make Community. And so if you like what you the programming that you see here, uh, and please become a member and join us at make.co. That's M-A-K-E dot C-O. And I'd like to thank Kathy again for joining us today and um, have a fabulous day. Can't wait to see your homemade DIY tote bags. And yes, please put the book up again. This is from Kathy's Fabric and Fiber Inventions book. So thank you very I'll much. Me. Thank, you. thank you. And that's all for now. Hope to join us again.